Hello everyone and welcome back to another space weather update. My name is Alexis. Thank you for subscribing and joining my Patreon as we continue into the space weather study that is Solar Cycle 25. So let, let's get into it because we just got the fourth strongest solar flare of this cycle. Last night at around 12.15 a.m. Mountain Time over here in Phoenix is the alert when this solar flare activated basically on the limb of the sun, the turning away limb of the sun. A sunspot did release an X, X flare basically, an X 2.5. And this flare impacted the areas here. Obviously this is not as much the area getting hit lately. So I would say that there's going to be some new movement in India, <laughs> potentially right here, smack dab in the middle of this, and potentially in the waters between Madagascar and and Australia. There is cyclones and so on, like storms moving through this area all the time. But I also read that this was a decently brief solar flare compared to some which we've seen can persist over hours basically this one was a little more sharp and brief so i'm going to show you that now in the last 24 hours here's the window of the x-ray radiation pumps that kind of came in the last 24 hours then in the last six hours we've basically just kind of gotten out of that window of the last large solar flare episode so as it's 7 35 a.m right now i woke up at 2 15 about an hour and a half after this happened and didn't understand how or why <laughs> and I could have made a video back then and and uh, been the first I'm sure to report on this so maybe next time I'll figure that why I'm awake and I'll make connect those dots a little sooner so I can make the content sooner but this x 2.47 or whatever 2.56 whatever they classed it at you can see like I mentioned it happened over a pretty brief amount of time time being the long ways measurement here it happened over maybe like a 15 minute window potentially even 10 minutes it was pretty pretty brief so the radio blackouts that may have happened in india or in, in those areas over the ocean due to that area being like over radiated and almost softened is kind of what happens and so it, it's too soft for those radio frequencies to kind of carry and that's why it's a concern you can look it up how the ionosphere reacts and how radio frequencies react to solar flares. It just kind of gives you the basic understanding of how our radios work here on Earth, which is cool. So here's the list of the top 50 solar flares in Solar Cycle 25. Like I mentioned, so let's look at our let's look at our collection so far, okay? So we've got the X5 that happened on the 31st of December right before we got into this new year of 2024, like hours, literally. It was actually yeah, it was only like three hours before the new year kind of officially started, was our X5. Then on the 9th of February, we received on the other side of the sun, the far side of the sun, there was an X3.38. That's what it looked like from our side. The glancing like side or backhanded energy that we were able to measure from this flare, because it wasn't earth facing, it wasn't facing the satellites directly that we know about <laughs> and so the reading for this was kind of I would say muddled up and unfortunately it has position of number two but we don't actually know how powerful this was the measurement and this is common this is not an uncommon situation I just want you for those of you who are new like if we go to literally the most it doesn't even yeah solar cycle 23 is the last solar cycle we have measured so 2003 there was a solar flare they measured that hit an over an x40 but again this was again on the other side of the sun i'm pretty sure both of these top ones probably most of these top ones were on the other side of the sun not earth facing i don't know about all of them but because i wasn't measuring back then in 2003 i was like 10 so a little bit different but <laughs> now that we are <laughs> we have some really strange like it sucks i really wish that this this was more accurate so we could really know how strong it was it most likely was stronger than that x5 is my opinion that happened on the 9th and that same sunspot group 3575 was potentially responsible for this episode as well it seems like the actual sunspot, this one in particular, 3575, 
this particular sunspot is still active on the other side of the sun. And I'm reading reports about it still. Like it's going to rotate around for the third time and come towards Earth, in my opinion, and potentially give us, who knows, another X flare. It's possible. It's possible. So X flare number three, that was the most powerful. That happened a few days before the most powerful one in December last year. So December 2023 was popular. Now we have February 2024 being the next popular month for the X flare behavior basically so here it is our x flare from today an x 2.5 it's ranked fourth position in solar cycle 25 and as they're claiming it came out of 3576 sunspot which is the sunspot that formed next to or in the same time nearly the same time as the other previous strong one 3575 so 3575 and 3576 are rowdy i would say sunspots and they're still active and it's been now I'm saying it's through January and into February, December even, I've been watching these sunspots. It's been fascinating. It's great for me to learn as this is my first official sun cycle that I'm tracking. So <laughs> back on 420, 2022, okay, was then the fifth most powerful solar flare. So this is when Taurus season begins, 420, May 20th, sorry, April 20th. April 20th is a very sacred day and that is my personal opinion through observing over the last I don't know six years seven years I had a very intense personal experience with the gods I would say this day the 420 before they federally legalized for the entire country of Canada so there was some unlocking happening um, months before they federally legalized on 420 back in I think that was 2018 so there is a loop I've noticed a time loop that happens on this day and I got married for 2020 20 <laughs> to see if honestly this if the universe would even let us and it did it cleared the way there was literally no one else in the streets because of the lockdowns that day and the most private wedding experience possible <laughs> which for me is great an Aquarian season in general which is approaching us aggressively I would say the Aquarian energy that we are submersed in is massive so here's the sign of Aquarius we've got Mercury Mars Pluto and Venus Venus is moving towards it literally as we speak today it will move into Aquarius the Sun obviously mm -hmm. so we've got one two three four five bodies in that particular sign <laughs> so obviously the sun is the winner and the moon will come around as well but the moon already has moved out of the sign it's making its rounds it's over in Taurus now it's going to come all the way around by the time Pisces moves in or sorry the sun moves into Pisces season so you can see it's getting there we're like a quarter of the way towards Pisces season now <laughs> where Saturn and Neptune are hanging out. So when that happens, in a few, I would say in like a week from now, when we move out of Aquarius season, Pisces season is going to have some dreamy structural changes going on. So I would say March is going to be very interesting but all this Aquarian energy is helpful for those people who don't like to be, I would say, on the front of everything, in the face of everything, but are the brains behind a lot of things. And the communication energy, the war energy, the love energy, and the death energy are all going to be in Aquarius. Life, death, speaking, and both the male and female aspects. So all the inner planets the most outer planet it's quite a lot of Aquarian energy I just hope that I've emphasized that enough and if you don't know what that means it means you certainly should look up Aquarius as a archetype and you should look up your natal chart to see what Aquarian energies you were born in and are kind of replaying in this life oh here's a good example of some Aquarian energy I'm just kidding but for real I was pushed to remember August 4th, 2020, when 
the Beirut explosion happened over in Lebanon on the coast there and basically the largest non-nuclear explosion that we've had in history was this day and for some reason this energy is coming back up so for those of you who lived through this those of you who witnessed this the day of and was like oh that's different you were absolutely correct and I believe that it's going to become more relevant for some reason in our collective story very soon so heads up on that explosions that don't involve the surface of the earth and moving around particles here all kind of start at the sun and the biggest story other than the fact that we finally got an earth facing somewhat earth facing flare from where this sunspot right here if you can see it undulating around on itself and giving off some energy is the back side of the sun has just been exploding it's been stupid in my opinion like scientifically it's been stupid the amount of data I'm seeing rolling in about how much backside sun activity is happening for me it's just a huge sign that there's clearly something going on back there and what is it so what's behind the sun according to us is mercury so maybe mercury engaging the sun between like we're basically in between this the sun is in between us that possibly is causing so much turmoil that the sun's surface just can't rest. A lot of these flares are moving out towards Mars, Venus, and maybe then Pluto as well when it comes to that trajectory. So I think this clustering of planets is causing a ton of activations right now and potentially more so directed towards those planets and whatever actually is happening there. And their, you know, journey through life, okay? And it's funny because we're watching it from our seat on Earth. But wow, what the views would be on Mercury and Venus and Mars with all of the activity the last few days. I haven't even had to post too much because the activity had been so heavy shooting the opposite direction of Earth, which it still involves us because we live in the heliosphere, which is the sun's, basically the sun's greater electromagnetic body. We live within it. We're bodies of the sun in a way, or I would say, uh, what do they say? Those organelles in a cell. We're like one of the organelles of the sun's larger cell, which is the heliosphere. And it has a wall and a, a barrier and everything. So it's funny because the heliophysicists, they all want to post something every day on Twitter. But some days are less popular news day, I would say, on the sun. The sun just doesn't give us a ton. And so they'll start looking at more and more subtle research and more and more subtle readings and reporting about that. Now, this is not a subtle reading at all. This happened yesterday, the 15th. Again, this is Earth, Earth, not Earth direct, but it is on the side that faces Earth slightly. It's basically rotating towards us now on the incoming limb of the sun is a very active area which is sending these humongous fire tornadoes plasma tornadoes into space now these huge plasma arms and plasma filament releases again have been a massive theme for this solar cycle and studying the solar cycle as it goes to its max which is in the middle of this 11 year window so now they're saying it started the solar cycle started january 2020 but back in january 2020 i remember having that conversation that it was 2019 like November 2019 or March 2019 and stuff like that so it seems like pegging where the beginning of the solar cycle is a little tricky until you've actually finished the solar cycle or at least gotten past the middle point so would that mean we're in the middle point now or next year or the next year I'd say we're approaching the middle point um, area and the most intense portion of the solar cycle right now because I'm seeing a shift in the sun's behavior that's going into even more, I would say, unpredictable and intense than my trained eye the last six, seven years of the more calm section or the calming and ramping up motion of the solar cycle. I kind of jumped in at the end of, or at, during 2017, which is kind of like when things started cooling off last time. And I've been waiting until now to see it pick up again. So what we're seeing pick up are these massive, and we have the equipment to look at it, peer at it. There's humans on Earth with their own 
telescopes that are picking up and going on live streams on all these social medias and sharing this information and educating people because people are terrified. People who've never watched the sun or learned about this solar behavior, they'll see my posts and they will panic. They will panic because they think something's truly wrong, just like this person literally running for their lives out of the train station, the underground subway from whatever that is, filling up the air. It looks like it's coming out of the lights, but it's funny how that works. Over here in the train station in DC, the Eastern Market train station. So <laughs> this is how my new followers behave on my page. They see the smoke, they see the fire. They're like, oh my God, are we running for our lives? Are we gonna die? <laughs> I'm like, oh no. That's not what I was trying to show you at all. I was just trying to show you the awesomeness that we do get to witness and live through regularly is this type of footage. So those of you who are new to my channel and think I'm here to try and spook you, I'm so sorry. That's not my intention at all. I'm genuinely enjoying watching how big and massive these explosions on the sun can be and how easily, in a way, humans on Earth can be ignorant to it. It's fascinating to me that our own sun can have all this activity and humans and life on this planet can then be in denial of it, be in fear of it, be totally confused by it. And that's what inspired me after my university degree was to educate about this particular factor because I knew there was going to be extremely intelligent people who we trust with our lives like surgeons and so on who are going to need to learn this because they did not. And I promise you, being a surgeon and having this information about the environment and about your patient, I bet you it would make things a little less scary. And I, I know that's a bit of far-fetched and you haven't probably haven't needed this information to successfully be a surgeon or a chiropractor or a kindergarten teacher or somebody volunteering to look after all of the stray dogs and unwanted dogs at whatever mm -hmm. shelter. I just learned today that Maricopa County Shelter has like 800 residents, all of these farm dogs that aren't needed in apartments. So if you guys need farm dogs, there's a bunch down here just waiting for a place to run around. Come pick up a friend. So the volcano in response I would say because every time there is an X flare there's also a volcano I'm assuming it is just the pressure release of the earth being hit with that initial that initial energy of that solar flare which we get the radio we get the warnings about the radio signals not carrying because of these impacts but do they warn us that a volcano anywhere <laughs> could explode as well when these happen not yet but I feel like that would be the responsible alert to add in so space with a live app which i inform everyone please download space with a live app but also <laughs> download a volcano app and vol and a earthquake app whatever works on your end to get those alerts immediately i follow a twitter page that sends those alerts so i get tweets that's how i do it i also have an earthquake app but if you live near an earthquake, or yeah, that too. If you live near a fault line or a volcano, I would say get Space Weather Live, the app, and watch for when these solar flares are, are basically reported because you're going to see some sort of activity either by you or indirectly moving past you along those faults. So this is the Santiaguito volcano near the town of Quetzaltenango. Tenago? I, I don't know this town. Over in western Guatemala. What a name, seriously. But huge volcano. Mass volcano. Clearly a constantly active volcano. It doesn't seem like it's shocking anybody, but still. It still reacts. So why? What could possibly be pushing on the volcano or on our planet during these events from the sun that could cause this type of disruption? Well, I would like to direct your attention to the screen where I'm going to be showing you the activity from the f February 15th into February 16th. Now, those of you who were out and about on the 14th maybe saw that there was some 
very unfortunate situations happening on the 14th here in the United States, especially on the home soil of the new winners of the great football tournament that they do here. And the winners of the great football tournament hosted a parade on their home soil, and there was an attack on the people who attended that celebration, which was a parade. So that happened the 14th. Now, there was a few other things that happened that day, including my own grandmother-in-law going to the doctor and having a positive, basically a positive diagnosis about, um, I would say, infection in her intestines that is major for the theme this year. So we're going to be talking about the big C for multiple reasons, because not only did the king of the English-speaking world get diagnosed with the big C, but then in the news, I think on the 14th, 13th, 14th as well, Russia started to chime in about the concept of the big C and what they are capable of, potentially even treating it almost like the other big C (laughs) that came through that everyone was, I would say, coerced heavily into receiving the treatment. And those of you who are more used to being coerced and kind of pushing back against coercive behavior and not allowing your free will to be infringed upon or to be victimized or claim a victim good for you and the conversation in that continues and I'm trying to tread very lightly on this but this is all related this is a part of my mission because what activated me was my own grandmother being diagnosed same in her intestines and her colon finding these growths and finding this problem and it moving to her bloodstream and everyone being terrified for her, her own healthcare practitioners being almost too afraid to deal with her case, which obviously is not very good. The, you need to be confident. If you're not a confident healer, stop what you're doing, <laughs> in my opinion, and uh, go get, go find a confident healer to learn from. Confident, successful healer. If you weren't there, if that's not you, then you have yet to finish your training, in my opinion, and there's no shame in that because knowledge is power, but again, power corrupts. So if you get too much and you think you have more knowledge than everyone else and you want to charge $10,000 for your healing touch, go ahead and do that, but you're definitely going to have a lot less customers and maybe a less, I don't know, friendly experience with people. It's possible, but is this new, this new treatment that Russia is offering or at least discussing, is this treatment, is this going to cost anybody any money? Will it be brought out? Will that conversation continue? I believe it's supposed to because if you've studied radiation and the effects of added radiation on living cells, living beings, artificially, It causes a lot of that big C to start populating people. The mutations start going in the opposite direction. The body starts to eat itself. And if you don't fast once in a while and allow the body to do that naturally, so if you aren't doing the periods of time where you don't eat through the day, about 8 to 10 hours, potentially up to 12 hours of just not ingesting anything, which for most people can be most of the sleeping period of their day, if you're doing it right, That is when your body eats up and removes all those weirdly mutated things that aren't working properly. But if you are eating too regularly, your body doesn't go into that system and it doesn't clean itself. It doesn't clean your brain. It doesn't clean your cells. It gets clogged up. And so the clogs and these clogs in people are what are showing up the most when this radiation comes in from the sun. So the footage I'm showing you is the activity from the 15th into the 16th into this very moment, into that X2, whatever it was, solar flare that we just got. The fourth most powerful potentially solar flare of solar cycle 25 so far, right? So the formations of the plasma just itself coming off and how far it extends out to space and the speed which you're seeing it kind of break off and explode outward all of that stuff gets felt and so if you have these clogs in your system 
whether it's clusters of mutated cells growing mm-hmm. maybe in one of your organs or if it's clusters of tattoo ink that maybe is getting stuck in your bloodstream in your brain. I have had conversations with people who were under the impression they were dealing with these situations during these heightened solar activity. And so in this study, I've just been observing all of you and your your bodies and your reactions and how you've healed yourself and how you've yet to heal yourself. And the Telegram chat room, t.me slash Ascension Diaries chat, is my free space for you to go and talk about these things, anything that's ailing you. When you notice there's solar flare happen and then whatever it is you're dealing with on a health basis got more intense, it's a sign that this is your motion to adapt to the environment do what you need to do to clean your body so these energies can flow through us and not bounce off of a little cluster of metal or even I mean hey like the healthy cells of your body also want these photons right so if there's stuff in your gut that's blocking these photons from reaching you that can cause issues like microplastics as well plastic D- mm-hmm. It basically absorbs and doesn't let these lights and these frequencies pass through them. And metals will cause them to bounce. They will refract it. So we have been dealing with microplastics and metals in our food supply. And cleaning that out has been a chore and it takes many years. But if you must start and continue that process. If you want to keep watching Solar Cycle 25 as it goes into 2025, its peak summer 2025 you have until then so if you're having problems now get help get help and start cleaning and if you just need to do a 12 hour fast make sure you're fasting for 12 hours a day and you stop Mm -hmm. eating processed foods that naturally have more of these metals and plastics in them you'll be on your way like the body is supposed to be able to take in organic stuff be organic and move it along like we're designed for this we should naturally be totally fine in these conditions pretty much unless you're right on the brink and your body's ready to go or you're right on the brink of being born and your body's ready to form like that's another big part of these solar flares that x2 last night someone got pregnant you know what i'm saying and someone passed away like that's happening all the time but i bet you the odds are that those those moments spike during a solar flare i'm almost positive i don't have the paper for that And I'm assuming that paper is probably written in Russian. I'll be honest with you too. A lot of this research was already done in the 20s and earlier. And then here we are. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Literally a hundred years later, having the same conversation and doing our best. And the Russians are like, hey, you know, it's interesting how they're becoming more vocal. They're offering more to the conversation right now. The Russian, I would say, leadership and collective so as we all are sharing a planet it's my opinion that that is responsible and that every country leader should be actively talking to us about what's going on and what's going on with their people and that conversation should be very very I would say expected commonplace for us in our daily earth life in my opinion so that's kind of what I'm aiming for just to protect everybody and prepare everybody as we continue to move along towards solar cycle 25's peak, potentially July 2025. So if you're having any of these health problems, like I said, and you don't want to make any changes, you don't want to do any of those fasts, you don't want to do like a Zen cleanse or a greens cleanse where you just, or even a bone broth cleanse where you're just giving your body ingredients to to clean and rebuild its cells properly then hey that's your total free will and uh, all I'm gonna say is I don't think your symptoms are gonna get better and I don't think they're gonna go away if you don't make any movements towards keeping yourself cleaner and I just saying that out of all the love in my heart because I care about you and I've watched someone close to me suffer. Now I'm watching another one 12 years later, like the cycle is repeating in my life. I'm approaching it totally different because I'm 30 now, but I'm watching the cycles and I'm your friend. I'm your sister here in this 
and I care and that's why I'm here and that Aquarian energy it truly cares it cares and it doesn't even want credit for it and that is kind of where I'm sitting at like I'm just trying to spread this information I've now ran run into many people with a business mindset about how they spread and share their data and information and I'm like well that's good for you (laughs) but the sun is who runs my schedule and it's a little bit more spiritual than that I would have to say and I couldn't help it I just felt like this was the most efficient use of my time was to become aligned and spiritually connected to our sun and our earth so I could keep healthy and keep everyone around me protected much better so if that's you as well we're on the same team and some of this data I don't know how to read this particular data this is something new someone shared but I liked it because again it just kind of shows you how megahertz here on the side how the frequencies are being stimulated by these plasma emissions basically from these solar flares and these coronal mass ejections on the sun all this plasma and material that comes off the sun is all this life-giving building blocks right of course but it comes in at speeds and temperatures that we're just maybe not used to so it may be a little uncomfortable which is why I do this show, is basically just help those of you who are uncomfortable, who are absorbing all of this radiation that we got from this X flare today, making sure you're all okay, making sure you're feeling validated. Here, South Africa gets a ton of energy, so they're getting, that cord is being plucked for sure. But look at this, like the Himalayas, I think that the the holy people in India are going to have a lot to say today, China as well even. Obviously, all of... (laughs) Eastern Africa as well, Western, I mean, all of Indonesia is pretty much involved. Okay, not all, but yeah, pretty much. I mean, we've been getting the biggest earthquakes and volcanic activity pretty much in this area of the earth, but that volcano that went off was all the way over here on the opposite side of that impact. So do you see how it went through the whole globe basically and popped out over here? Boop, if this was globe shaped, it would be a lot easier to make that interpretation and teach people that. But I think making this flat actually makes it more difficult for people to connect to this particular image. I find people don't even know what I'm talking about when I post these. They're like, what does that mean? I'm like, can you not see, can you not read charts? Like, it's funny to me how people didn't get the education just to literally look at the labeled legends of the data they're trying to stare at. It's, you know, it's, I can't tell if people are being ignorant or if they were never taught how to read charts, if they're being lazy. Like, I can't tell if it's ignorance or laziness. And I'm curious because I want to help. So I'm trying to figure out a solution to communicate that better to people. That's been the whole game is trying to communicate this to people without them freaking out and thinking this is a one, one off situation, but also to make them care and kind of become more sensitive to their own bodies, which is, in my opinion, the way we can love ourselves properly and fill our own cups and be available with our spare and extra energy responsibly instead of running around giving from empty cups and exhausting and killing ourselves in these solar flares. The earthquake situation is going to basically pick up. We've got some earthquakes showing up in Turkey They got a bit of that radiation. New Zealand, they got a bit of that radiation. I'm assuming the earthquakes are going to pick up in this region. So let's see. New Zealand's been the most active today. New Zealand, Turkey, we've got even a little bit in southern Greece. Chile and northern Algeria even felt an earthquake. Iceland got a little bit in the Philippines, but nothing too much. Iceland is calming down slightly since the last... The last X flare was Iceland cracking open again, making us some fire tornadoes. I don't know if you remember that. It was pretty recent. But again, so much happens in our lives. It's like from X flare to X flare even, so much happens in between those windows. It's hard for me to even use that as a way to show you time passing. Okay. But if you're confused and you're like, just need a moment of news about the space weather, you can go to spaceweather.com. And they'll have an article written, you know, letting you know about the last X-class solar flare, maybe giving you a picture of the sunspot that did it. 
okay this is our culprit right here as it's turning away so you can even physically see some of the filament that came out this has been happening a lot these uh, the danger of sunspots that don't face earth big sunspot AR3576 is about to disappear over the sun's western limb. This makes it uniquely dangerous. <laughs> okay, like they're saying. Sunspots located near the sun's western limb are magnetically connected to Earth. Okay, the sun's magnetic field spirals around like a lawn sprinkler, a shape known as the Parker spiral. Look at this diagram. Okay. Lines of magnetic force coming out of the western limb curve around and touch our planet. AR3576 is now in the danger zone. If there is an eruption today or in the next couple days, the debris may be funneled back to Earth by our Parker spiral. The resulting radiation storm could pepper satellites with high-energy protons, fogging cameras, and causing reboots of onboard electronics. At such times, shortwave short radio propagation can become difficult to impossible, especially around the polar regions. So, polar regions is where all that magnetic, all those magnetic lines kind of ground into the Earth that are carrying all this stuff down the spiral from the connection to the sun. So let's look at this closer. Excellent article today. Thank you so much. I'm trying to explain this to people all the time. So this is what they're talking about. Basically, the sunspot is about to turn and explode right here where they make a picture because it's so common. And because of the magnetic lines and the way that all of this stuff spirals out, it's basically going to rain over us more than it would if the sunspot was even shooting over, not on the limb, it seems like. We do get more of the coronal mass ejections if we're closer this way, which is a whole other game. But it seems like almost that some of the more dangerous particles can flood over and impact us a little more intensely in these conditions. So that's what we're in. That's what that X flare was, was one of these. And that was the sunspot that did it. <laughs> They warned you, and we saw it happen. So at least we know the space weather people are decent at predicting what's going to happen. It means that they have decent theories, and we're going along somewhat of a scientific pathway, <laughs> which is better than I can say for most things on the internet at this time. It's pretty tricky to find those strings of logic. They're all there, but it gets harder and harder to find that needle in this haystack once you start harvesting huge fields of hay with a lie anyways <laughs> woo science it can get you get you all amped up you know the scientists us nerds we get feisty about stuff the solar wind activity has been a little bit irregular but it looks like this little lump was right when that solar flare happened so we got a little bit of solar flare or solar wind activity with that but I'm seeing overall the reports are saying that even though this one was like, ooh, things could get dangerous for you of this sunspot that just hit us, <laughs> literally. They're like, hey, watch out. <laughs> just kidding, we were 100% right. It happened at 6.53 universal time. A brief 2.5, X 2.5. Classy. There she is. So let's take a peek. It's been a few days, so I'm going to lecture longer in this video, obviously, than I usually do, just to be sure that all my thoughts over the last few days, as I've been watching and reporting about it, but not making a video, but posting, reposting the infographics and whatever it is that comes out. So there we go. So that's our 3576 solar flare on the limb, having an X 2.5 solar flare. Flare. That sunspot, that 3576 sunspot, excuse me, on the limb having an X 2.5 solar flare going towards who? Towards the planet Venus and Mars, I would say, and maybe even in the distance, Pluto is going to be wrapped up in that. A little bit side glance of Mercury, but definitely not the most uh, or Mercury directed thing I've seen. In a way, it kind of slipped past even Venus a little bit almost like it slipped in between Earth and Venus a little bit. 
which is good. Go along. Go along and send that mes message further out into space. It's meant for a different planet, or whatever. <laughs> so here we are, we're in that final moment. It could X-flare one more time today, who knows? It could be happening right now and I'm not noticing it. But I have my alerts on like during the shows now because that will happen. I'll record and then boom, a solar flare will happen. And I'll miss it. And then I'll upload the video and realize I had missed something that had just happened and my heart breaks a little bit. So don't wanna miss it. I don't mind making the shows long. <laughs> Because now I see there's some logic here. Now, there's a lot of labeled sunspots here. I don't know if you noticed, there's a lot going on. So just because this one's on the limb and in its most, I'd say this is the most active position, just had an X flare. We have potential for a few more flares, a few more things to happen as the day progresses from other locations. But it's not as likely. Global consciousness though, since that flare has happened, has been pretty good. It's been mostly in the green. It's a bit a little jumpy, but still jumpy in the area of green or mostly, mostly neutral, I want to say. Mostly neutral on the planet. <laughs> the stocks and all, not the stocks, I would say the crypto coins and projects that we've been following. Corium being one of them. Stronghold being another. XRP being another, watching the behavior of the economy move around, is a part of this show because my husband educates people and he just saved somebody who thought they had lost like $10,000 the other day from their crypto stuff, like losing it or putting it somewhere they couldn't get it back and he helped them find it and retrieve it. So the, he does that for people as well. If that's something you're interested in and you have you know, a substantial amount that you'd like to get back. Of course, he he can try and help you. He does one-on-one -on -one sessions for those particular customers. Because it's hard not to, it's hard not to relate. I mean, mistakes are made, but we want to help. And it looks like, I mean, today's not really the day to be dumping more money into these investments. These investments are now all doing like new growth pretty much that I can see. You might know of one. But things are on the rise. The, the liquidity of the market is flooding into the coins right now, the crypto coins. So those of you who maybe watch stocks and so on differently than I do, maybe you saw it, the flow kind of slow down and move towards the coins, or maybe together they're both just flooding with capital at this time. Put a comment if you know that, because I'm not watching that particular factor yet but I'm assuming that's coming. When it comes to the Earth's electromagnetic frequencies, I'm seeing subtle, but subtle, subtly bizarre, as usual when things get quiet, but there's solar flares. I always see there's something weird still going on in Russia and in Italy. Now, there's another resource in Italy that if you guys still have that, can you send me the link to that? Because I've lost it. There's two Italian locations. Please and thank you. I kind of need that back. And I think there's a Greek one too. So if you guys have those, could you send me those links, please? And if you need any links from me, all the stuff I look at, it's in my link tree under this post. My link tree is in all my social medias. It's linktree slash Ascension Diaries. And I have all the space for the links that I use, even the links to the apps I want you to download to make this easier. Because we're all on the same team. And I'm trying to have a good time with all of y'all on this whole whatever this is as it shakes and communicates all throughout the planet. We're, having a, we're trying to have a good time. The lightning is, I would say, settling at the equator. Kind of north of the equator. very bizarre honestly I just don't know what to say because one day I think in our lifetime they're going to reveal why there's always activity here <laughs> and I don't think it's my job to do that but it's certainly my job to show you that I'm not ignorant to it 
and that I want to be a part of that conversation when it happens or at least listen to it, that would be great. I don't claim to know things about that. I'll let you know what I think I know for sure, but it ain't a lot. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. Like I said, you, you heard how young I was. I'm okay with being the learner in this experience. Maybe when I get into my 90s, I'll be like, well, I think I actually do know a few things. We'll see. Probably by then, I'd probably refuse to say I know anything. <laughs> so this is the magnetopause or the magnetosphere around the earth. This is basically our front line protection. This is the magnetic lines that they were talking about in that article about the solar flares going over the limb of the sun. These are the magnetic lines that they're talking about that the earth is spiraling out of itself because the earth spins, right? So these magnetic fields just kind of spin with it. And sometimes they spin and they get really wild when we start funneling in all that stuff from the sun. But right now I'm seeing a decent amount of coherency, I would say, for the conditions at this moment, like the coherency here with the magnetic lines. Like you can see it's it's kind of swelling up a little bit, but nothing insane. Like I've seen some crazy ass readings on this when those solar flares start funneling at us. And then here's a little bit more of the temperature, I would say, that builds up behind the earth when the wind does kind of move around us. It puddles behind the earth as it then moves towards the rest of space. And we leave that energy behind, flying through and past it as it continues its trajectory outward from the sun to the rest of the heliosphere. So when this gets a little hot, people get a little sore. I would say that there was a lot of soreness on the 14th. People were reporting neck soreness on the 14th. Maybe it was discouraging for people to leave the house that day because they were in pain. And I would say listen to that. Listen to your body because it needs to last. You need to take care of this thing like it's a luxury sports car, our bodies, and listen very carefully to its very minute motions. Like it will make you feel so much more whole if you do engage this. And it's, I've been doing it over these years. I don't expect you to get it right away, but start. Something I'm starting is watching the, l the lunar Mayan calendar and how it lays out these themes and the themes of the days as we move through. It's not just telling you the date, it's telling you like all the energies and the themes and the metaphors in a way that should be showing up that day. And so I read them on these shows to see if that resonates. And sometimes it just, the language just does work. It's odd out of context, but in context, it seems to apply a lot better. So where are we today in the Mayan calendar, in this cycle of, of, of themes, I would say, which you can see them all down here. You can see all of them here. So here we are. We are back in the lunar, the blue lunar storm theme. Blue Western Castle of Burning, Earth Family Gateway, Clan Sky. I polarize in order to catalyze. Okay, so that's kind of like the solar flare, in my opinion. Because that's kind of how it happens. There's like a, the two sunspots of opposite polarity kind of finally sort themselves out or try to. And it creates this explosion of light, multidimensional light. And this flare and it just shoots off all of the coronal surface and pretty much everything in its wake and then electromagnetically like stokes the planet right away down those magnetic lines and then sends all the rest of the stuff that it shot off the sun at us so this is a stabilizing energy though it says so do you feel more stable today i actually do so maybe it was stabilizing what was kind of going on since the 14th i seal the matrix of self-generation which is amazing. We were talking about your regenerating healthy cells today. With the lunar tone of challenge. Excellent. I am guided by the power of magic. Excellent. Okay, so this is giving me all the great words of wisdom here, in my opinion. So the lunar tone of challenge. The moon is currently in Taurus. So that is the challenger in so many ways. Taurus will not really do anything 
it doesn't want to do it's like the most stubborn earth sign like try pushing a bowl in the field or leading it to where you want it to go you know you're really going to have to entice it with some really tasty snack like that's pretty much the only way you get a Taurus to do anything (laughs) and I have my brother's a Taurus like I, I love I know Taurus as a Venusian myself I get it as well Taurus being the feminine Venusian energy and Libra being the masculine Venusian energy so but in a way this lunar tone and this this Taurus energy maybe is challenging us it's challenging us to regenerate to self-generate and I was challenging you in this video self-generate I got to take all the lessons that maybe my grandmother-in-law won't hear me out about and that's her free will and I really don't want to interrupt her process and her body transitioning and all that because interrupting somebody's death window or their healing window when you feel like you're not welcome in that space that's just in my opinion I think that's just such a waste because there's so many wonderful lessons that can come in when you're sick and when you're healing as well as self-empowerment and if you think other people are are responsible for you healing you're going to be keep giving your power away and keep running back to the healers and flinging yourselves on their tables and being like fix me fix me I went ahead and got myself into trouble again, but here you are to fix me. And it's like, no, this is self-generation. I'm challenging you to use the magic of our own bodies and of the photons and everything that's now abundantly available to us. Absorb that into your body. Get out in the sun. Tell the photons what you want them to do. I swear, I want you to regenerate and replace my body So it is functioning in perfect order for this environment. And that might help kind of give you that invocation to move that energy and use it for your benefit. Now, when the moon, because the moon moves through those signs most rapidly. Okay, why are we in January all of a sudden? What was that about? Here we go. Like I said, so here we are, the 16th, first quarter moon, we're in Taurus, it's about to go into Gemini. So there's also body parts that go with every one of these 12 signs in the zodiac. The 12 zodiac refer to the 12 chakras, I would say, through your body, 12 areas instead of seven. So, and it's not even fully direct, it's more like meridian systems, I would say the 12 maybe major meridian systems of your body is a better way to say it. For example, Taurus is your neck, your vocal cords, your throat, and your thyroid gland. Those of you who have had thyroid issues is today reminding you of that. Are you on top of that? Are you taking care of your thyroid, which means taking care of your environment to not be in a deeply stressful and I would say coerced place? especially as a Taurus. The Tauruses don't like that. <laughs> they um, may speak out or, you know, move their thick neck somewhere else. <laughs> and mm, then the moon moves into Gemini. So the moon's moving into Gemini tomorrow. Today's Friends Friday. I didn't even realize. Happy Friends Friday. Tomorrow's Saturday already. That is insane. It's already Saturday tomorrow. Wow. Wow. That last weekend situation really just like plowed all into the week and took over the whole week, including Mardi Gras, which most people didn't even talk about in our community, how Mardi means Mars. So it's basically like a celebration for Mars and Mars moved into Aquarius and then like all these awful things happen, like wartime things. And I was like, okay, this is all starting to make sense. So this weekend, we're going to be talking about it, it looks like, because the moon's going to go into Gemini. So we're going to talk about our emotions. Geminis are the fearless speakers. They're the shoulders, the arms, and the lungs. So basically, you're breathing and you're flapping like a bird. You're flapping your arms and you're breathing, and that information's coming out of you. (laughs) And on Monday, moon day, we're going to be in the home of Cancer. So Monday, moon day, Cancer day. Looks like the, the Divine Feminine is going to have a bit of a moment there on Monday and Tuesday. So those of you women out there who maybe are going to have their hands full this weekend with a lot of chit-chat about the concerns about the world and the moods of the world, 
you're going to have a nice rest on moon day monday cancer day so those are my some of my favorite days as a woman i feel them every moon day i feel that relief of the moon being in its own energy and the relief of kind of that hot spicy concern that humans can get (laughs) and i go there too i'm there too so i'm not talking ill on anybody without personal experience the aurora also picked up on the 14th i believe it was we were finally waiting for that to happen just slightly and since then again even though we're getting all of this stuff coming off the sun to me it doesn't make any sense i'll be honest with you the aurora lately has not been making a ton of sense to me with the amount of solar wind and the amount of explosions i'm seeing come off the sun like all that matter that would be streaming into the poles it doesn't seem to be streaming into the poles you know what i'm saying not at the rate that made sense to me so far as i've tried my very best to make sense of all the patterns in this study without having a formal education teaching it to myself with the knowledge i did get from my formal education once you learn how to teach yourself and learn education system it's easier to begin take up something else and teach yourself something because you know what's involved to learn something (laughs) that you didn't know so all i'm learning at this channel is that whoever the precious souls are that i get to actually talk to about this and discuss all this with are my soul family you know And this channel has endured years and years and years of controversial discussions. And there are channels out there I know that are way out left field and they've got way more support and blah, blah, blah. But do they have a soul? You know what I'm saying? This channel has a soul, okay? It has remained intact and very much so. Uh, Not even a waiver, I'll tell you that. There has been no wavering. As many opportunities to push me off this path that maybe would deter someone else I was like ah yeah I'll get back to it tomorrow oh maybe today's not the day I'll come back to it tomorrow and guess what I could so if you just need to take a day off from what your mission is come back the next day or even take a week or a month off don't worry one day you're gonna wake up with the fire in your solar plexus and you're gonna be like I need to do this one thing for the mission and you will and I trust that process And thank you for those of you who've moved over to subscribing to my YouTube channel and trusted me in my process and enjoy what I say. Encourage me to keep making videos as long or as short as they get. I really am trying to gather the information and say what I think is the most relevant and helpful thing for all of us to, I would say, traffic through this. Now, the concept of traffic and the term of traffic was the big theme for last weekend. All illegal traffic all illegal activity, the major awareness that was held about that was palpable. The awareness of the illegal activity that is encouraged during these big sporting events or these big media events is becoming the main it's becoming the main concern, I would say, for people. And that's good. That's what we wanted. So we're in that trajectory. But for those of you who are new to my channel, or those of you who are new to my medicine, or whatever you want to call it, I'm constantly creating content to strengthen our community with what I feel is the most effective medicine. On the 18th, every single month, I do a live stream with the audience. You're invited to this live stream if you're seeing this video. It's already ready to go on my YouTube channel, you can hit notify me, or you can formally join my Patreon. And you can join these every month and you don't have to worry about keeping track of anything. It'll be emailed right to you and you can keep up with me responsibly with that passion that you want to meet me with. And we're going to go over these topics. So last month on the 18th, we talked about sexual energies. That theme is going to, I would say now piggyback onto this theme. I've decided I'm going to roll all the themes into each other now this year and combine them all because I don't want to forget about them throughout the year or neglect them. It's like I don't want to neglect the theme of sexual energies. So I'm going to add it and apply it to all the other themes as we move throughout the year. So this month we're going to be doing the protection lecture, which is we did last year. Now we're going to be doing the, I would say, the more advanced version of this 
And this involves me medium shipping, or I would say channeling messages from um, people who had passed away. And I do this professionally. You can go to ascensiondiaries.com and get a reading with me right away. And we can talk to your passed on loved ones. As I already shared in this video, I have a passed on loved one and she is the gateway in which I have been able to enter this line of work was believing and knowing that this is real because I've personally experienced her spirit on the other side. I understand how it works and I have training in the field and I've been very successful with all of my clients about getting these messages and moving on. But having these celebrities and these passed on people that are world known or at least in the English speaking world, very famous, having these people come to me now in between sessions and through my clients and now it, it's funny how they creeped up on me I'll be honest with you because I wasn't reaching out to them directly I never I didn't have the audacity to do so I don't have the audacity to reach out to people I've not met unless someone's asking me to like unless it's my client's family and then they come running over anyways to come for the session and input whatever they can so to have clients and friends of mine talk to me about passed on loved ones who were who were celebrities and then having these celebrities and their spirit follow me after the client session weeks after showing me signs up up until right now about themselves about their career about their death about what happened to them it's amazing they've been showing me things that I couldn't make up and it's through all of a sudden I'm reading an article that popped up on my news feed about them where there's a video or footage of them that you've never seen before doing this or that in their career. And these private moments almost of these, these uh, celebrities are being exposed to me. And then the conversation picks up and I find myself sitting here in meditation having a conversation with the celebrity about them, mm. what they went through. And some of them are very brief. The messages are brief and some of them way more way more complicated way more complicated these people are not all innocent angels you know they are they're complicated human beings too and most of us know that but in this topic of protection a lot of them are coming forward because they want to be a part of this workshop with us and they want to share their knowledge about how to better protect yourself in this crazy place that they have thoroughly experienced some very dark twisted things in because of their own pursuit for power and influence as an artist or because someone was pressuring them to become influential and so there could be some sort of other agenda in the shadows I would say push using this person as a frontman for example so these sort of engagements you know people we know about this stuff this is not uncommon on earth at all and to have the topic of protection be our February theme, I thought was very appropriate because of these, the big tournament that happened last weekend and because of the, I would say, the level of people in helicopter and plane crashes as well the last few weeks and the, I would say, again, the big the conversation about the big C as well and healing modalities and global politics it seems like so that all being said the, it's going to be a very interesting workshop I want to say on the 18th <laughs> and it's coming up in a few days so please join me if you have the time see what's up and again the recording is going to be live and it's going to be available on my YouTube channel the overall message that I get as a healer and as my mission here is make the content that people can access and get the information out there Get the frequency out there of love and genuine honesty and do it as often as you feel, you know, the guidance to do so. And I do and I obey those feelings. And here I am having a long video with you discussing it, being more thorough for some reason. I trust that process. I trust how thorough I may be in the protection workshop. But I also am now, in a way... I'm almost not the lead of this workshop anymore, if that makes sense. It seems like that I've now created the space to have this discussion, of course, every 18th, whatever theme it is. They know my themes because I already did a year of them. 
So I know what my theme is next month too. We're just repeating last year. But it's like now there's guidance that's coming in from people that you may recognize that you may not even know are dead. And that's another part of the topic that we will have to discuss in the protection workshop. So if you're having any of these experiences or you're getting inklings of these, please join. Please hear me out. Please hear what my genuine information is about all of this that I truly think will help and inform us as we are the guardians of the innocent and of this world. I know I seem and I sound kind of formal and purposeful and almost like a fictional superhero sometimes when I talk and I talk about this stuff and I realize that and I am fallible human being I have I I am I do not suffer fools I see and see through people and I'm not impressed you know what I mean and I had to make my own work basically my own body of work my way despite having the pushback multiple from multiple beings who think they knew better than me truly that has been the uphill battle is the projection that people put on you when you start doing this work because they think you should be doing it their way because I think they're unsatisfied with what they're doing their way but they think you can do it better or something like that I've been trying to figure that out as well so that's going to be a part of the, the lecture is other people's projections on you and how dangerous those are to our soul basically and our free will and that's also what the celebrities are going to come through and talk about. So as a sneak peek, as one of the celebrities that's coming through that may be a little controversial for all of you, and that's how I'm going to finish today's download and video, is Grimes, the Canadian musician who is very similar to me in age, and I would say in energies. And this is not a being I was expecting to run into with this topic or at all. You know what I mean? But her own audience believes that. I think, I think out of all of the celebrities that are maybe uh, not quite fooling their audiences very well about what's maybe happened to them, Grimes' audience is up there as open and blatantly commenting on her current upload saying, oh, rest in peace, Grimes would have loved this. And... It's interesting. Like the conversation is that her own audience believes that she's not really who she is anymore. And they openly talk about it whenever she posts something on her official platforms or whatever. So this is a conversation that's kind of just, I'm giving you a taste. So maybe that is the final straw. Like, oh, okay, I'm definitely going to have to come and watch this workshop. Whatever it is. And I mean this with all the respect and the love of the entire multiverse that all of our lives and all of the lessons we learn are valuable and I am simply deriving the theme protection for this month and whoever wants to help me is stepping forward right now. So I will see you on the 18th. Thank you for sharing this Solar Flare video. Thank you for watching, liking, commenting. I love you all so very much and onward we go studying Solar Cycle 25. Bye guys.